This is a lesson from our Editing Foundations course. To get the full course, go to bloopanimation.com slash editing foundations. In post-production, processing color has a couple of similar sounding but very different stages. Color correction is the stage where we focus on making sure that all of our footage has consistent color, contrast, and brightness. The goal is to balance these technical aspects and make them match from shot to shot. Individual shots can be unbalanced for various reasons such as lighting issues, environment, and shadows. Color grading is the more artistic part. This is where you push and pull the colors, temperature, and contrast to give them a certain mood or tone. In this video, we'll be focusing on the color correction aspect. To start off, let's go into the color workspace. Here, we can see a couple of windows that we don't have in the other workspaces. First, we have the Lumetri Scopes window. If we click on this wrench icon down here, this window can show a few different monitors, but we'll just be using the Waveform monitor. The Waveform monitor shows us a representation of the colors and brightness values in our image. If we move our playhead along, we can see that the waveform changes to match. The brightness of our image is represented vertically, so the brightest point will be at the top here and the shadows will be down the bottom here. This waveform monitor is in RGB mode. So we have separate signals for red, green, and blue color channels laid over the top of each other. Over here, we have a window called Lumetri Color. Lumetri Color is a video effect that allows us to do both color correction and color grading on a clip. When we adjust the parameters on this, the Lumetri Color effect will be automatically applied to our selected clip in the timeline as we work on it. If you want, we can just add it like a normal video effect by searching for Lumetri Color in the effects window. Having this dedicated panel in the color workspace is just a bit more convenient. The Lumetri Color effect is broken up into several stages here, but we'll just be sticking to this first basic correction stage in this tutorial. The first setting is the input LUT. LUT stands for lookup table. This is like a pre-made color adjustment that can do some color correction and grading work for us. We won't be using lookup tables in this tutorial. Next, we have the white balance section. If the white balance of our image looks overall a bit too yellow, this is where we can add some blue to counteract that. Or if our image looks too magenta or green, we can push the tint in the opposite direction to counter this as well. The most straightforward way to correct white balance is just to use this white balance selector tool. As long as we have a section in our image that we know should be white, we can just select this tool, click on that section, and the Lumetri effect will automatically apply an appropriate correction. If you want to reset any of these parameters, you can just double click on them. Next, we have the Tone section. Exposure affects the overall brightness of the image, and we can see the brightness values being dragged up and down in the waveform monitor as we adjust this. Contrast affects the overall contrast between light and dark. When we adjust this, we can see the center of the waveform stays the same, but everything else is pushed outwards. The darker parts become darker and the brighter parts become brighter. Highlights will just change the contrast in the lighter parts of the footage and shadows will affect the contrast in the darker parts of the image, all while keeping the absolute upper and lower limits the same. The whites and blacks settings allow us to adjust those upper and lower limits. The whites setting controls how bright the brightest part in our image can be. The blacks setting allows us to adjust the very darkest point of the image. Finally, we have saturation. This is how much color is in the final image. If we decrease the saturation completely, we'll have a fully black and white image. If we push it to 100, the colors will be a lot stronger and vibrant. While we're making adjustments in both correction and grading, we need to be able to directly compare different shots to each other. This is where we can use the comparison view in the viewer window. We can activate the comparison view with this button here. Now, if we scrub through the timeline with our playhead, we'll be shown our current frame in the right side of the viewer. If we scrub through this little timeline on the left side of the viewer, this allows us to see two parts of the timeline at the same time, so we can use it to compare different clips. We can change the way this comparison is laid out with these buttons. 
So we have a side-by-side -side comparison, a vertical split comparison, and a horizontal split comparison. You can click and drag on the dividing line to change where the frame is split. Now let's apply some colour correction to our shots. For some projects, we may need to apply colour correction to every shot before grading. For the most part here though, the shots we have are pretty even, so we only need to make a couple of minor adjustments. To make things a bit easier, make sure to toggle the track targeting for this layer. This means that the playhead will automatically select any video clips that it passes over, so we can start working on them with the Lumetri colour window straight away. This shot here is slightly overexposed, meaning it's brighter than it should be. If we compare this to a similar shot earlier on in the film, we can see this issue more apparently. To adjust for this, I can just lower the exposure level in the Lumetri colour effect. This shot here has a bit of a blue colour cast to it, so we'll need to white balance it. I can just use the eyedropper tool on this small white highlight to fix this. This shot here is a bit less contrasty than it should be, so again I can use the comparison view and adjust our contrast to counteract this. If we compare these two shots from different parts in the film, we can actually see a bit of a continuity error in the colours. In particular, these shadows in the background are pretty washed out in this second frame. I'll lower the exposure a little bit, and then we can up the contrast a whole bunch to help smooth this out. We can see that we've actually lowered the whites level of this second shot, so I'll adjust this to compensate. Whilst we can't quite get an exact match between these two shots, this should help a little bit. And with that, we should be wrapped up with our colour correction stage.